Hey, Nish here, and as the title says, I tested this 550 pound heart rate tracker. This is the Frontier X2, and full disclosure, it was sent to me to have a look at, but everything in this video is my honest experience and opinion. So the unit itself is pretty small, it weighs just 25 grams and you connect it to the chest straps, two of which are included, with some buttons. It has a very small screen and just one button, so it's not a very interactive tool, but you can initiate recording from the device itself. In terms of some specs, it's IP67 rated, so that's up to a depth of one and a half meters in water if you have the micro USB port covered. It charges in about 45 minutes and will give you up to 24 hours of continuous monitoring, and that's also how much the onboard memory can store. So what is the unique selling point and why is this heart rate tracker so expensive? Well, their killer feature is that it can continuously monitor ECG, which is an echocardiogram, which shows you exactly how the heart is beating. It can also continuously stream this to another person via a link. Now, your typical smartwatches that measure heart rate sometimes have ECG tracking capabilities. For example, the Fitbit Charge 5 I reviewed had a feature where you measure it for about 30 seconds while you're standing still, but they don't typically measure it while you're doing exercise. It's worth noting, obviously, the measuring of this device is not the same as a medical grade ECG, which has something like 12 leads, but they said that they validated it based on one of the lead measurements. So aside from measuring this ECG, it's also measuring, of course, your heart rate, your heart rate variability, which is the regularity between the heart rate pulses. It can measure cadence and shock when you're running and also breathing rate. There's also a lot of analysis that is done after the sessions are recorded. So at a surface level from the ECG, it can look at whether your rhythm is regular or irregular. It can then also calculate the strain on your heart as a result of these various metrics. And apart from that, the final global thing that it calculates using its intelligence is the amount of load that you've put on your body during the session. This can then be accumulated during the week with a training load target and you can stay within your limits. Now, it's not super clear to me how you decide what training load limit would be appropriate for you, but of course, maybe there's a bit of trial and error involved. The other unique feature we've got here is the ability to set alerts while you're exercising. So there's an option for two different alerts, one with a single buzz and one with a double buzz. You can choose one of breathing rate, heart rate, and strain and set upper and lower limits or upper and lower limits. And then it will give you a buzz when you're outside of those limits. So this could be useful if you need to rein in your exercise and you maybe have a heart condition and don't want to train so hard. Alternatively, you could make sure that you're outputting a very high level of heart rate to make sure you're not slacking off. It's worth noting this isn't really a comprehensive fitness device because it doesn't have GPS, it isn't going to measure your distances or your speeds, so if you need to know that then you probably need some other device. It does have like the option to measure for 20 different activity types, but it's not immediately clear to me what changes when you pick one activity over another, apart from running where it can measure your cadence and your shock. So we can take a look at the mobile phone app, obviously on Android and iOS, and it's a pretty well laid out app. You can see on the home screen, it gives you some metrics and then you can look clearly at your activity history. A cool thing they have is they save all your workouts to the cloud unlimited for free, and you can access those either from the app or a web app. As I mentioned, there's that option to live record your ECG and then you can generate a link and send that to anyone around the world and then they can monitor your heart for you. Connecting the device is pretty straightforward as well. You just press a button on the device once and then you can connect to it on the app. And I think it's pretty easy to connect and disconnect. So it's possible to maybe share this device with another person, obviously not two people at the same time, but you could uh, you know, easily share the use of it by having one person disconnect from their app and the other person connect on theirs. On the app, there's some AI features. So it continually gives you sort of notifications and recommends what type of session would be good for your training load. It also analyzes each activity you've done and gives you a summary of how that session went in terms of which, you know, which metrics stand out. There is the opportunity to bring in data from other applications. There's Garmin Connect and Strava, which are available. The only program that has a good configuration in terms of sending data from here is Google Fit. So you can automatically send your heart rate data to Google Fit, but it doesn't have automatic configuration with any of the other fitness tracking apps. Before I talk about my experience from testing out the tracker, please subscribe if you're liking the video so far. It helps the video get out there and the channel to grow and I'd appreciate it a lot. So I gave the tracker a go for a few different activities. Firstly, in terms of the physical aspects of the device, it's pretty easy to put on, pretty comfortable, and a simple elasticated strap, and I didn't have any problems with that. So I tried it for you know a quick meditation which was obviously zero strain as we can imagine a yoga class which was something that was had some peaks and troughs and some variation and then also a bit of cycling and running it was interesting that for running i was running running into one of the pre-configured alerts for the breathing rate so i was going over the maximum allowed breathing rate but i think you know i wasn't going that hard so i think you know maybe with these alerts you just need to adjust them to your level after trying them out overall the tracking works quite well you can look at the ecg data with a very good granularity 
I did find sometimes the ECG data became very noisy and I don't know if this is because I didn't have the placement perfect or I didn't, for example, put some water on the contact points, which they recommend to improve the uh, measurements. It's nice and all to be able to see that full ECG trace, but I did find myself scratching my head and thinking, what can I actually do with this information? Maybe I just don't have the knowledge or the, the coach to look at it and tell me that I, that I did a good job. And you know, I don't really have any heart conditions, so I'm not looking out for any irregular rhythms. So given the testing and the experience I've had, I noticed a few things that I wanted to make you aware of if you're considering buying this as a bit of a warning. So the first thing is regarding the engineering of the device and something I wasn't very impressed with is that the waterproofing, which is IP67 rated, is contingent on this tiny little rubber cover on the micro USB port. Now this cover completely comes off. There is no attachment point and you need to take that off every time you want to charge and then put it back on. And they give you a spare, but I'm a clumsy person. I could easily see myself losing this quite, you know, dropping it on the floor or something. And it's such a tiny piece. And it just seems like maybe it should have been something that was integrated on the device itself. Along that line, it only has a one year warranty, which for a device this premium and expensive and something that's going to have active use, I'm not, I don't know, one year just seems a little low. The other limitation which I've already mentioned is it doesn't really have integration with other fitness apps. So I mentioned you can't automatically export data to anything apart from Google Fit. If you want to export the data from here to another app like Strava, Garmin Connect, or whatever you have, you have to manually download the heart rate data, you know, easily done in the app, for example, but it's still an extra step, and then manually upload that to your other app. Of course, one option is to just connect the Frontier X2 as an external heart rate tracker to those other apps, but then I feel like if you do that, you're probably not going to be able to measure all these ECG and fancy things that you're able to do when you're using the Frontier X2 app itself. Another thing which I'm not sure how much it will affect your average person is there's a universal codec for connecting up health and fitness devices called Ant Plus, and the Frontier X2 does not support this. So that could be a potential issue depending on what devices you want to integrate with. So is there anything else similar on the market? Well, it turns out that, yeah, I was having a quick look around and one of the most popular heart rate trackers I found was the Polar H10, which costs just 60, 70 pounds. And it looks to be a pretty well-featured heart rate tracker that also has some ECG tracking. Now, of course, there are a few things that the cheaper H10 lacks. So it doesn't have a very large onboard memory. It can only store one session. It doesn't have real-time streaming of ECG like the Frontier X2 has. And it also doesn't have the ability to do those alerts to make sure you stay within you know, the parameters of training you want. That being said though, if all you want is a very accurate heart rate tracking and a bit of ECG information about how your rhythm is, I find it quite hard to think why you pay £550 for the Frontier X2 when you've got something that cheap and well established. So to conclude, this is a really specialist niche bit of kit and honestly I find it hard to recommend if you don't specifically need the special features that this has. If you don't need a full ECG trace of your exercise and sending it to someone to live stream, it's really hard to recommend this. And you know, sometimes with these fancy devices, a normal person like me can play around with it and find some useful information. But this honestly seems a case to me, if you don't need it, you don't need it. And for that reason, I find it a lot easier to recommend something like the Polar H10, which is well established, that could probably give you the accurate heart rate information that you need if you're not satisfied with your typical fitness tracker's heart rate tracking capabilities. Aside from that, you know, like I said, it's not a comprehensive device, and I don't know how many devices you wanna have hooked up to you while you're doing exercise, but this isn't gonna measure your speeds or distances. And I imagine if you're interested in your heart rate that much, you're probably also interested in your performance in that way. But, you know, it's all not all doom and gloom. I think it is a well-made device. The app and the online support seems pretty well done. Although yeah, you've got the problems of app integration and you've got the problems of some of the physical aspects. So make of it what you will. Do let me know what you think of my take on this device. If you've seen another device out there that does something similar for less money as well. Thanks again for watching, hope it's been useful. Subscribe for more To The Point content and I'll catch you in the next one.